What is Bian Zhengwu's true purpose? After Zhang Yi agreed to Bian Zhengwu's request to visit, he drove with the investigation team toward the shelter. At this time, in the investigation team's vehicle, Wu Di asked Bian Zhengwu in confusion, Captain Bian, aren't you being a bit too nice to that Zhang Yi kid? Could he be your long lost illegitimate son? Laughter erupted in the vehicle. Bian Zhengwu slightly smiled, accustomed to Wu Di's joking manner, and then solemnly said, Don't underestimate that Zhang Yi. My intuition tells me that his strength is absolutely extraordinary, incomparable to the leaders of other forces. I think we should consider bringing him into our team. Hearing such high praise from Bian Zhengwu for Zhang Yi, the other members of the investigation team were also somewhat surprised. The River South domain standards for recruiting mutants are extremely strict, especially for those who are not originally members of the River South domain. Demolition expert Yi Jikong curiously asked, We haven't seen him in action. How can you tell? Bian Zhengwu thoughtfully said, Firstly, it's my intuition, and secondly, it's based on experience. Their team is only a few people, and I guess the ones in the car ahead represent all their combat power. Yet with these few people, they managed to replace the West Mountain base, and become one of the top five forces. This shows that their strength among mutants is noteworthy, and Zhang Yi, as the core of the team, undoubtedly has the strongest comprehensive strength. They have also resolved the surrounding zombie crisis, which shows that this Zhang Yi is extraordinary in both strength and intellect. Vice Captain Bailey Changqing laughed and said, You make a good point, Captain. Your judgment is indeed sharp. But then Wu Di pondered and said, Hearing you say that, I'm itching for a challenge. I really want to spar with him right now. Bian Jun would directly threw cold water on the idea. Forget it, you're definitely not his match. As far as I know, his special ability counters yours. Hearing this, Wu Di became even more provoked and asked defiantly, He can counter me? What kind of special ability is that? Bian Jun will responded, It's a spatial ability, which is extremely rare even among special traits. At this, a commotion broke out inside the vehicle. Spatial ability. Bailey Chang Ching widened his eyes and murmured, Across the entire River South domain, the owners of spatial abilities are few and far between. The strategic value of such an ability is incredibly high. Even setting aside his combat capabilities, just having the ability to store items makes him a mobile warehouse. This kind of ability, especially in the inconvenient conditions of the post-apocalyptic world, undoubtedly has a unique advantage. No wonder the captain wants him to join our team. Bian Junwa laughed. What you said is indeed correct, but this is after all just my personal guess. We still need to assess what he's really capable of. The main thing is whether he's willing to come with us to River South Domain. Meanwhile, on Zhang Yi's vehicle, he was also discussing the River South Domain investigation team with a few people. Zhang Yi said worriedly, These people are too strong, completely different from the forces we've faced before. It's better to keep a low profile around them, since they are from the River South Domain, and a certain amount of reverence must be maintained. The move Bian Zhang Wu used earlier, which Zhang Yi found quite frightening, made him realize just how powerful the legendary River South Domain is. People like Bian Zhang Wu, who are mutants of this caliber, are surely not the only ones. Now that the River South Domain is interested in recruiting him, Zhang Yi doesn't mind ingratiating himself with representatives of a major power. After all, often in life, it's necessary to be adaptable. Moreover, Zhang Yi can sense that Bian Zheng would genuinely bears no ill will towards him. Soon, the two vehicles arrived at Lark Manor, seeing Zhang Yi's luxurious villa. Bian Zheng Wu couldn't help but exclaim, I thought a shelter would be something like a bunker, not this kind of luxurious mansion. Kong Sheng also gasped instantly, isn't this a bit too extravagant? Even in River South Domain, you couldn't find a shelter of this level. At this moment, Meng Siyu from the back seat said, don't make such a fuss. Don't make people think we're country folk coming to the city. We're from the major district. You should know, this shelter, built by the wealthiest for a billion US dollars, it makes sense it's this extravagant. The luxuriousness of Zhang Yi's shelter greatly surprised everyone. They never imagined that Zhang Yi could live so lavishly in the post-apocalypse. Zhang Yi, smiling, invited them inside to sit. Shou Kier immediately leaned over and asked in a low voice, are these the people from River South Domain you talked about on the phone? Why do they all look so fierce? She knew that Zhang Yi wouldn't easily bring people to his shelter, so she remained on alert. Zhang Yi said with a smile, they're here to help deal with the zombie crisis. Go prepare some food and drinks. Zhang Yi turned to Bian Junwu and the others. What would you like to drink? My place is a bit modest. Only coffee, alcoholic beverages, and cola available. Please don't mind. Everyone felt a bit awkward, thinking Zhang Yi might be deliberately showing off his wealth by calling such a luxurious place modest. Bian Junwu, trying to appear calm. Just plain water is fine. Bian Junwu suddenly said, Can we talk alone? Zhang Yi nodded with a smile. Of course, we can. Saying this, Zhang Yi led Bian Junwu to the conference room. Once there, Bian Junwu got straight to the point. Now that it's just the two of us, you should tell me how you dealt with those zombies. Remember, the more details, the better. You might have been vague with them earlier, but there's no need to beat around the bush with me. You don't have to make anything up. River South Domain has plenty of intelligence. I can tell whether it's true or not just by listening. Zhang Yi felt slightly embarrassed, thinking, this Captain Bian really isn't easy to fool. If I continue to be vague, it might leave a bad impression on him. With this 
this in mind, Zhang Yi decided not to hold back any longer and told Bian Zheng with the whole process of how he dealt with the zombies. After listening, Bian Zheng was suddenly took a sip of hot water and said sternly, Are you hiding the truth from the major forces to get revenge on them? After all, they once joined forces to attack you, or are you planning to eliminate them all and eventually take over Heavenly Sea City yourself? Faced with Bian Zheng was interrogative question, Zhang Yi was not flustered at all and said evenly, At first, I did have that idea. As you can see from the current situation, they originally wanted to take over the territory of the West Mountain base and tried to eliminate me together. I was forced to defend myself, but that's not the main reason. As you know, the subway network in Heavenly Sea City is vast and complicated. Managing just the next Channel Garden station near me is already at my limit. I don't have the capacity to flood all the other lines, so I simply keep out of it. Moreover, I don't think this can permanently solve the problem. It's hard to drown a zombie king that easily. As long as the zombie king exists, the zombies will never stop. Yin Junwa found this reasonable and then asked, Have you ever seen the zombie king? Zhang Yi shook his head repeatedly. I haven't, but I believe it must exist. They say zombies are attracted to living beings, but there are only a few of us in the shelter, and we hardly ever go out. How could we attract such large hordes of zombies? So, I think these zombie hordes are purposeful. They must be receiving commands from someone. This person is either the zombie king or someone with the ability to control zombies. Bian Junwa kept praising him. You are indeed very smart. Zhang Yi modestly shook his head. It's not really any great wisdom, just some small cleverness to barely keep alive in these harsh end times. Bian Junwu actually thought Zhang Yi's approach was very wise, as completely solving the zombie crisis was indeed unrealistic for Zhang Yi. If all the underground zombies were driven to the surface, Heavenly Sea City might completely lose control. Bian Junwu looked at Zhang Yi and said, I think you have great potential, and I estimate your strength has already reached the Delta level. Have you ever considered leaving this small place and trying your luck in our river south domain? Upon hearing this, Zhang Yi immediately interrupted Bian Junwu and asked, What did you say? What is Delta? Bian Junwu then realized that Zhang Yi was not familiar with these terms about mutants and smiled. I forgot you all don't know about this. Let me educate you properly. He then sat up straight and asked, Why do you think there are mutants? When did mutants start appearing? Zhang Yi knew about this and replied without hesitation, Isn't it because of the gamma rays sweeping over Blue Star and then the ice apocalypse started? Bian Junwu immediately rejected Zhang Yi's words. That's not correct. In fact, mutations in humans have always existed. From an evolutionary perspective, all life has been constantly mutating, which is essentially a process of natural selection. In a way, today's humans and our ancestors from hundreds of thousands of years ago are already two different species. In this long process of evolution, billions of people, a small number with special abilities, always emerge. For example, generals with immense strength, wise men who could manipulate clouds, or mutants with extraordinary forms. They all count as mutants. So, mutants have actually existed since ancient times. It's just that the influence of gamma rays has changed the genetic sequences of the entire group. Therefore, the proportion of mutants appearing has drastically increased, giving rise to a large number of mutants. In fact, research on mutants by various countries around the world began a long time ago, so the classification of mutant levels has also existed for quite some time. Zhang Yi, with a puzzled look, crossed his arms and asked, I've seen the major classifications of mutants in the information database of West Mountain Base. What are these mutant levels you are talking about? Bian Junwu began to educate. Nowadays, there is a global consensus on the classification of mutants. The lowest level is called Alpha Level, where the abilities are quite ordinary, just a bit stronger than a regular person and without the potential for growth. Next is the beta level, which has stronger abilities than alpha, but still with limited growth potential. When reaching the gamma level, mutants already possess quite powerful supernatural abilities. These individuals can easily withstand hundreds of ordinary people or possess extremely powerful auxiliary abilities. Zhang Yi thought to himself that Uncle Yu and Chun Lei might belong to this level. Zhang Yi then asked, What comes next? Bian Jun will continued, That's when the real supernatural powers come into play. At the delta level, the most obvious sign is the ability to absorb other mutants' energy for their own evolution. Zhang Yi was startled by this. No wonder he and Flower, as well as Liang Yu, can absorb others' abilities, but Uncle Yu and Fatty cannot. Bian Junwu continued to explain, Actually, some delta-level mutants may not exhibit very strong powers, but they possess the ability to continuously evolve, so the potential of delta-level mutants is limitless. Based on my experience, I'd say you and the leaders of the major forces are likely at this level. Zhang Yi thought to himself, Delta, this is already the fourth level among mutants, and it's considered quite a high evaluation. Bian Jun will continued, the last and highest level is Epsilon. As he said this, Bian Jun was tone became serious. The potential of mutants at this level is boundless. Each one is considered a national treasure. They can not only devour the power of other mutants, but also possess terrifyingly strong abilities. Zhang Yi looked at Bian Jun Wu and couldn't help asking, you must be an Epsilon level mutant. Just one glance killed thousands of zombies. Thinking about it now still leaves Zhang Yi immensely shocked. But Bian 
Jun Wu shook his head and said, I'm just like you, only at the delta level. Hearing this, Zhang Yi was greatly surprised. How is that possible? You're so powerful and still only at the delta level. Then how strong are epsilon level mutants? After hearing Zhang Yi's words, Bian Jun Wu suddenly laughed. Zhang Yi couldn't help asking, Could it be that I misunderstood? Bian Jun Wu told Zhang Yi, It might indeed be a bit different from what you think. In fact, the classification of abilities and the strength of combat power are not absolutely related. It actually represents a limit of capability. The manifestations of abilities are diverse. Some are combat oriented, some are supportive, and there are even other peculiar special categories. If an ability is countered or if there are environmental restrictions, it wouldn't be strange for a higher level mutant to be killed by a lower level one. Zhang Yi deeply agreed with this. Before he knew about the concept of mutant levels, he always thought that special abilities were just a kind of weapon, and how effectively one could wield this weapon depended on the person using it. Zhang Yi pointed to his nose and said, then how did you determine that I've reached the delta level? What have I done to deserve being at the same level as you? Bian Jun Wu's words didn't need to hide any information. His classification of Zhang Yi as the same level as himself might be based on two considerations. First, his ability's lethality is extremely terrifying but likely has significant flaws. Second, Bian Jun Wu recognized the potential of Zhang Yi's spatial ability. Although a spatial ability is not a combat attribute, its dual nature of offense and defense gives it unlimited potential. Thus, rating him as delta is reasonable. Then Bian Jun Wu said, I made a rough judgment based on my experience, but the specific classification needs to be determined by the professionals from the major districts. However, delta is a critical point. If there's no ability to co-absorb, then it can be judged as below gamma level. At this point, Zhang Yi curiously asked, does River South Domain have any Epsilon level mutants? Bian Jun Wu indicated that currently there were none, but he had heard that there was one in the capital region. This was not really a secret. After the apocalypse, in order to manage vast areas within their jurisdictions, the major districts not only had to resolve various crises but also guard against groups trying to cause chaos during the end times. Without absolute power to suppress them, the world would have been in complete disarray long ago. Mentioning the Epsilon level mutant, Yen Jun was eyes filled with envy. It is said that this individual's power is so great that it defies common understanding. Anyone he targets, even if they are thousands of miles away, can be killed with just the thought by him, a power that could be described as miraculous. Hearing this, Zhang Yi almost didn't hold onto his water cup securely. His eyes widened in disbelief as he looked at Bian Junwu and said, Isn't that a bit exaggerated? A thousand miles away? Are you sure? You're not joking with me. Could it be a guided missile? Bian Junwu laughed. It's much simpler than a missile. There are many things you simply can't understand. Just like you can't understand how I wiped out thousands of zombies in a glance. It's said that once he sets his sights on someone, their death is certain, and it doesn't matter where you run. Zhang Yi suddenly felt overwhelmed, thinking that this might only be explainable by mysticism. That's utterly inconceivable. Bian Junwu, however, thought otherwise. Many things indeed seem unbelievable, but that is the reality. God himself likes to play dice, so we shouldn't be surprised by whatever the world becomes. Theoretically speaking, there's even an ultimate level for mutants, which is the sixth level, Omega. However, this level only exists in theory. Some researchers hypothesize, based on realistic deductions, that it is a form of mutant that can grow indefinitely and whose power has no limits. If one reached that level, they might be no different from what we call gods. As he spoke, Yen Junwu suddenly started coughing violently. He tried to suppress the cough, leaning on the table for support, but the table shook so much that water splashed out of the glasses. Seeing this, Zhang Yi quickly showed concern. Captain Bien, are you alright? Should I call my personal doctor? Bien Junwu coughed for a while before it subsided. His glove even had blood stains from the cough, but he discreetly wiped it away. This scene did not escape Zhang Yi's sharp eyes. Bien Junwu said, no need for a doctor, it's just my old problem acting up again, and it's incurable. I probably won't last much longer. He spoke too casually, as if discussing a stranger's health condition. Zhang Yi felt a pang of emotion, confirming his suspicion that Captain Bien indeed had a serious health issue. Then Zhang Yi comforted him. With today's advanced medical technology, even cancer can be cured. What illness can't be treated? My family's doctor is a chief physician at a top-tier hospital. Should I call her over to check on you? Perhaps there's still hope? Hearing this, Bien Junwu was actually a bit angry and said with a tone, There's no need to trouble you. I know my own body best. I volunteered to come to Heavenly Sea City to handle the zombie crisis. I just hope to contribute more to River South Domain before I die, in exchange for a better living environment for my wife and children. Saying this, he unexpectedly removed the sunglasses he had always worn in front of Zhang Yi. His complexion was pale, and his pupils were even whiter, a sickly gray-white color, almost completely lacking the black of the pupils. Bian Junwu looked at Zhang Yi with his lifeless eyes and said, My ability actually comes at the cost of sacrificing my sight and health. This is also why I can only be rated as Delta level. Due to this fatal flaw, the number of times I can use my super weapon is severely limited. Zhang Yi was silent for a moment and sighed softly. I see, but I didn't expect you to reveal your abilities to me so easily. Bian Junwu said expressionlessly, 
badly. That's because I need your cooperation to handle the zombie crisis, so we need to understand each other's capabilities to work more smoothly. Bien Junwa continued, Actually, I am almost blind now, entirely dependent on this advanced visual aid device. In my eyes, you are just a figure emitting a red glow. Bien Junwu extended an olive branch. Are you interested in trying your luck in River South Domain? I think you have great potential, and you're very likely to advance to Epsilon level. Zhang Yi, however, declined. I don't have any plans for that at the moment. I'm not someone with grand ambitions. I just want to simply live a good life, take good care of the people around me, and wait for the world to restart. In fact, Zhang Yi also thought to himself, why would going to River South Domain be more comfortable than staying in my own shelter? Going out to handle missions every day, having to fight and kill, I'm not foolish. Bien Junwu, however, don't be too quick to refuse. Actually, the living environment in Blizzard City is much more blissful than yours. People can live as they did before the apocalypse, with city streets and night markets, all fully equipped. You wouldn't get that experience in Heavenly Sea City. At that moment, the scenes that came to Zhang Yi's mind were somewhat like the bustling snowy streets of the north. That strong sense of life indeed tempted Zhang Yi for a moment. Naturally, Zhang Yi flatly refused. He told Bien Junwa that he was very comfortable in his shelter and could live there for a lifetime as long as no one disturbed him. Bien Junwa's attempts to cajole him like a child could not deceive Zhang Yi. If Blizzard City really housed many people under the current conditions of supplies and living standards, people couldn't possibly be living comfortably. Even if such a place existed, it would only serve a small elite, not sustain absolute equality. Seeing Zhang Yi unmoved, Bien Junwa continued, After all, Heavenly Sea City is located in a coastal area at a lower altitude. If the day comes when the ice melts, this place will surely be the first to be submerged. Moreover, there might be enemies coming from across the sea, so only the central regions are truly safe, at least providing enough buffer. These words made Zhang Yi frown. He could disregard human factors, but he couldn't ignore nature. The return of normal temperatures to Blue Star and the melting of ice aren't impossible, but they certainly won't happen anytime soon. Zhang Yi frowned and replied, I can't predict events that far in the future. I'll take it one step at a time. Seeing Zhang Yi's somewhat resistant mood, Yen Junwu did not continue the topic. After further discussing the information on zombies and rat swarms, he then left. Bien Junwu slowly stood up and said, let's call it a day. Remember to cooperate with our arrangements, and if there's really a need, I will contact you. Saying this, Bien Junwu then walked to the living room. Zhang Yi politely offered to have them stay for dinner, but Bien Junwu still declined Zhang Yi's kindness. From their attitude, it was clear that although they were envious of Zhang Yi's shelter, they weren't overly covetous, indicating that their living conditions in Blizzard City must also be good. As they were leaving, Wu Di suddenly turned back and said to Zhang Yi, Zhang Yi, our captain said you're quite strong. How about we spar next time we're free? Zhang Yi simply smiled faintly, without responding. At that moment, Bien Junwu shouted at him, it's this late and you're still thinking of causing trouble. After the investigation team left the shelter, Zhang Yi breathed a sigh of relief. Zhou Kier couldn't help but exclaim, these people have such a strong aura of killing. Yang Mi also came over and said, I felt it even from the room. They seem stronger than those we've met before. Zhang Yi sighed and murmured, luckily, they mean no harm and are just here to deal with the zombie crisis. Otherwise, we'd be in trouble. Bien Junwu's strength goes without saying, and the strength of the others could also be roughly guessed by everyone. Even Kong Sheng, who holds a lower position in the team, could easily defeat Chen Jingwan, which indicates that the other members' abilities must be extraordinary. Such a fearsomely strong team essentially does as it pleases in Heavenly Sea City. Just then, Yang Xinxin suddenly walked into the living room and said, but they came with only seven people. To fully resolve the zombie crisis, I don't think it's going to be easy. I don't think this is good news. Hearing Yang Xinxin suddenly speak up, everyone naturally turned their attention to this exceptionally intelligent young prodigy. Zhang Yi looked at Yang Xinxin and asked seriously, what do you mean by that? At this point, Yang Xinxin analyzed, I think that River South Domain sending them here likely doesn't expect them to solve the zombie crisis in one go. They might just be the vanguard, mainly responsible for investigating the origins of the zombie hordes. Once the truth is uncovered, it's very likely that the main forces of River South Domain will deploy massively to Heavenly Sea City. By then, the entire Heavenly Sea City will be tightly controlled by them, and our living space will inevitably be squeezed. Zhang Yi pondered for a moment and said, Your analysis makes sense. That is indeed a possibility. At this point, Chun Lei said worriedly, Will they drive us out of the shelter then? Zhang Yi frowned and responded, I don't think it'll come to that. However, Yang Xinxin added, Actually, that's not the worst outcome. What if the investigation team finds that the zombie hordes are beyond their control, or that resolving the hordes completely would require too great a cost, then we'll really be in trouble. Hearing this, Zhang Yi's heart sank, realizing that Bien Junwu's invitation to Blizzard City was to give him a way out. If the investigation team finds that they can't properly handle the zombie crisis, then the fate of Heavenly Sea City might well be a nuclear fallout. After Yang Xinxin's summary, Zhang Yi immediately understood. Only by fully resolving the zombie horde issue could they live in peace in the future. If the hordes reach a point where even River South Domain can't handle them, the entire Heavenly Sea City
city might be nuked. Although the shelter has some missile defense capabilities, if River South Domain's objective is to level Heavenly Sea City, the scale of their operation could be entirely different, and they can't take that risk. Show Kier said with a worried expression, and with the zombie and rat swarms concentrated underground, if River South Domain really makes that decision, the whole Heavenly Sea City could be flipped over. Given our current strength, it's unrealistic to confront the zombies and rat swarms directly, so the only option is a decapitation strike, but the zombie king behind the zombies is so well hidden, we're basically helpless. Speaking, Joe Kier leaned on Zhang Yi. All this seems beyond our capabilities. It looks like we can only pin our hopes on those few from River South Domain. If it comes to it, we can just go to Blizzard City together. You don't need to worry too much. All fear stems from the unknown. Right now, we don't even know what the zombie king is, let alone carry out any decapitation strike. Chun Lei added, from the current situation, the zombie crisis seems to have nothing to do with the other four forces, as they have all suffered heavy losses. Hearing this, Yang Xinxin countered, I'm not so sure about that. Although they have also suffered huge losses, it's not right to hastily conclude that they are unrelated, like the human experiments at West Mountain Base. It's hard to say that other factions haven't conducted similar research that ultimately led to these out-of-control situations. After the apocalypse, the major forces have gone to extremes to enhance their military capabilities. For instance, the human enhancement projects at West Mountain Base, the military stimulants at Radiant Prosperity Base are all semi-developed experiments from after the apocalypse. The zombie hordes are very likely related to these experiments. Zhang Yi's thoughts were in disarray. He sighed. Let's not think about this for now. Let's see what the folks from River South Domain have to say. It'll be good to gauge their capabilities. It seems they've even brought a virus expert with their extensive combat experience. Letting them follow up should yield some results. If they can't handle it, then we'll step in. Meanwhile, at the headquarters of the Snow Worship sect, Jing Yixian returned to the church to report the meeting details to Yuan Kongye. He relayed the content of the meeting to the leader in detail, also highlighting Bian Zheng was strength, vividly describing how he wiped out 10,000 zombies in a single glance. After listening, Yuan Kongye's usually cold face showed signs of emotion. She muttered slowly, word by word, River South Domain, will they disrupt our plans? Jing Yixian was uncertain too, merely stating that the zombie crisis was already showing signs of spreading. If River South Domain intervenes forcefully in Heavenly Sea City, it will definitely impact the development of the Snow Worship sect. Moreover, Bian Junwu has also issued a warning to us, if the zombie crisis can't be resolved, River South Domain might resort to the ultimate measure, which would undoubtedly be catastrophic for us. Yuan Konya nodded and murmured, the ultimate measure, I suppose the other forces wouldn't want to see such an outcome either, they are probably more anxious than us. Meanwhile, the investigation team, after leaving Zhang Yi's home, went straight to the next channel garden station. Their specially modified combat vehicle was robust, equipped with a powerful satellite navigation system, something others wouldn't even dare dream of. Meng Siyu observed the frozen subway station and analyzed, it looks like the seawater froze and expanded, causing the ground to crack. Bian Junwu, leaning against the car, praised, Zhang Yi is really a genius to think of using this method. Wu Di, however, was somewhat unconvinced and said, Captain, I don't think there's a need to praise him so much. It seems to me that it's just a clever trick. He just used water to block the subway entrance, which is quite a primitive method and doesn't fundamentally solve the zombie crisis. Vice Captain Bailey Changqing laughed. Wu Di, you're still too young. The captain has his reasons for praising him. It's fine to be confident, but don't always look down on others. Wu Di remained unimpressed. It's not that I look down on him. It's just that in these narrow subway tunnels, using a bit of cunning can temporarily solve the problem, but it's not a long-term solution. If it were me, I could fight my way from one end of the subway to the other alone. Besides, if he could bring in seawater, why didn't he suck the zombies into a different space and then throw them into the sea? Wouldn't that be better? Yin Junwu looked at the somewhat boastful Wu Di and said calmly, Do you think these are brainless zombies? Do you know how strong the zombie king really is? And according to Zhang Yi, there are also gigantic, highly defensive bronze armored zombies inside, each with the strength to match a mutant one-on-one. -on -one. This clearly shows that the zombie king must also possess terrifying power. Even in such unknown circumstances, Zhang Yi's team was still able to retreat safely and deal with the zombies along the entire subway line. This isn't just about strength, it also requires brains. Saying this, Bian Jun will point it to his own head. Wu Di's face still showed some dissatisfaction, and he muttered, even if he's flexible and knows how to adapt, our team doesn't lack strategists. What we need are powerful fighters. Looking at the somewhat childish Wu Di, Bian Jun Wu didn't say much. After experiencing health issues, he had long since learned to let go of such matters. As Bian Jun Wu got into the vehicle, he said, let's keep moving. Next, I'll show you what it's like when zombies besiege a city. After getting in the car, he told the driver Bailey Chang Ching, head to Radiant Prosperity Base. Soon, they arrived at Radiant Prosperity Base and found a high point to stop, which perfectly overlooked the entire base. Bian Jun Wu switched his sunglasses to binocular mode. Inside the base was bustling activity. Following a meeting with the major forces, under Bian Jun Wu's instructions,
positions, everyone first moved underground. At this moment, Xiao Holian was directing the combat personnel to prepare defenses while arranging for some materials to be transferred underground. Meanwhile, zombies were swarming around the base, blanketing the ground like ants. At a glance, there were at least tens of thousands of zombies. Meng Siyu handed a heated military meal to Bian Junwu. At this time, the demolition expert and engineer Yi Ji Kong opened his computer, and using the military nebula satellite system, he could clearly see all the movements around from a bird's eye view. Yi Ji Kong analyzed, it seems that the number of zombies has stopped increasing. It looks like there is a limit to the number of zombies the zombie king can control at one time. Or perhaps that's all the zombies there are in the nearby subway. Seeing this, he suddenly had an idea. If that's the case, could we take the opportunity to attack the zombie stronghold while they are assaulting the base? If we kill the zombie king, all these zombies outside will become like headless flies. At this moment, Bian Jun will put down his eating utensils and said, that's indeed a good idea. Prepare for battle. Remember, there are powerful bronze armored zombies underground, and the strength of the zombie king is still unknown. Hearing this, Wu Di rubbed his hands together and said eagerly, Captain Bien, don't worry, these are just dead things. No matter how powerful they are, they surely can't pose much of a threat. When the time comes, just watch my performance. You won't need to lift a finger. Vice Captain Bailey Chang Ching sighed and looked helplessly at the spirited Wu Di as he scolded, Wu Di, we're not here to fight. I hope you'll follow orders. You know, killing more zombies is meaningless. Our target is the zombie king. If your recklessness causes the plan to fail, you won't be able to bear the responsibility. Wu Di then toned it down and awkwardly scratched the back of his head, saying, got it. The group got out of the vehicle and took out their weapons. Their weapons were somewhat unusual, looking like oversized pistols, especially the one in Bian Junwu's hand, which was all black and clearly extraordinary. At that moment, Bailey Chang Ching went to one side, took out a huge metal box, and retrieved a weapon resembling a long spear. The tip was sharp and long, resembling a huge cone, a weapon that was perfectly suited for his type of enhanced mutant. Upon reaching the entrance, they didn't rush in. Meng Siyu slowly crouched down, touching the ground and murmuring, Echo Scan. Instantly, an invisible psychic force shot deep into the tunnel, probing everything inside. She then stood up and informed the others, there are still zombies in the tunnel, but not many, and no special ones were detected. This means that the zombie king is likely hiding deeper in the tunnel. As soon as she finished speaking, Yen Jun would jump down the entrance, saying, follow me. As they rushed through the tunnel with Meng Siyu's ability, they could clearly discern any forthcoming dangers. After moving forward for a while, Meng Siyu suddenly said to the group, there's a situation ahead. We've found a large horde of zombies. This must be their lair. Bian Junwu, looking serious, asked, any sign of the zombie king? Meng Siyu continued using her ability to scout and finally spotted an anomaly among the horde, a white-haired monkey. Could this thing be the so-called zombie king? Meng Siyu couldn't help but mutter. Bian Junwu pondered, none of us have seen the zombie king before. Its existence itself is speculative, so it could be any form, even just an ordinary zombie. We're here now. Let's take care of this white-haired monkey first. It would be best if we can capture it alive. Bian Junwu then ordered, approach that monkey immediately. Meng Siyu, keep monitoring the movements of the horde, Bailey Chang Ching, and Wu Di. You handle clearing the zombies. Everyone else come with me to capture the zombie king. Following Meng Siyu's guidance, they quickly located the horde. Bailey Chang Ching shouted, you damned dead things. Today I'll make you die again. Suddenly, a huge explosion echoed through the tunnel, instantly sending hundreds of zombies flying, with limbs and parts scattering everywhere. With just one charge, he cleared a path through the crowded horde that extended hundreds of meters. Seeing this, Wu Di smirked and said, Vice Captain, you're not fast enough. Why don't you take a break and let me handle this? Saying that, Wu Di had already raised his fist, which was suddenly enveloped in a blue light, energy seeming to converge into his palm. As he exerted force from his palm, several blue energy orbs began to form around him. Immediately, Wu Di spread his arms and shouted loudly, and all the light orbs shot out. The orbs pierced through the zombie horde like laser cannons, the bodies of the zombies offering no resistance, as if made of paper, instantly penetrated. In an instant, the zombie horde was shattered by the dense beams of light. Seeing this, Wu Di began to laugh wildly. You useless things, kneel down and sing conquer for me. Wu Di's ability is called floating cannon, a special trait type ability that transforms mental power into highly penetrative energy blasts. Under the assault of the floating cannon, the zombie horde was torn apart like ragged cloth. Just then, four bronze armored zombies charged from behind the horde. Wu Di was preparing to continue his attack with the floating cannon. I'd like to see just how strong the defense of these so-called bronze armored zombies really is. Suddenly, Bian Jun was stopped him. You take a break for a while. Bian Junwu well knew that Wu Di's floating cannon, although powerful, also consumed a lot of mental energy, and overuse could cause irreversible damage to the user. Wu Di deactivated his ability and said, then I'll leave it to you. Bian Junwu and the others were also vigilant. According to Zhang Yi's description, the strength of these bronze armored zombies was not to be underestimated, and Zhang Yi and his group had nearly been overwhelmed by them. Each person takes one. Everyone be careful, Bian Junwu instructed. After speaking, Bian Junwu fired
fired three shots at one of the bronze armored zombies, one bullet hitting precisely in the zombie's eye, preventing it from getting close. Bailey Chang Ching and Kong Xing also chose their respective targets. Kong Xing activated his steel forging ability and instantly appeared above a bronze armored zombie. Following that, Kong Xing fiercely kicked the shoulder of the bronze armored zombie, and with a squelch, the zombie's arm broke off. However, Kong Xing also exclaimed, This hardness is really strong. You know, my kit could split a truck in half. At that moment, Qi Guangming suddenly fired a shot from behind, and instantly a beam of light shot past Kong Shen, blowing a huge hole in the chest of the bronze armored zombie. Qi Guangming, holding the strange large gun, laughed. This is no time for going solo. Teamwork is what works. Meanwhile, Bian Junwu had already disarmed the bronze armored zombie of both its arms and shot through its neck without anyone noticing when. But Bian Junwu still wasn't satisfied. He shoved his handgun into the mouth of the bronze armored zombie and then fiercely pulled the trigger, instantly killing it. Although the four bronze armored zombies were formidable, they were quickly dealt with by the coordinated efforts of the investigation team. But to the investigation team, this was just an appetizer. Just then, Meng Siyu suddenly clutched her head and shouted, Trouble! There's movement in the zombie horde ahead. It looks like six bronze armored zombies are escorting that white-haired monkey trying to escape, and a large number of other zombies are swarming towards us. Bian Junwu immediately deduced that the white-haired monkey must be the zombie king, and the incoming horde was meant to buy time. He immediately ordered, Chase them down. We must capture that creature today. But ahead in the tunnel, the zombie and rat hordes were swarming towards them like mad. Seeing this, Bian Junwu silently took off his glasses, thinking there was no more time to waste. He then activated a technique called extinction, and the entire tunnel was instantly enveloped in a dazzling golden light. In just a few seconds, the zombies in the tunnel up to a kilometer ahead turned to ash. At that moment, Bian Junwu covered his mouth and nose, unable to stop himself from coughing violently, but he still looked ahead and said, chase them. Simultaneously, outside the Radiant Prosperity base, the zombie horde seemed to receive some kind of signal, abruptly stopping their attack. As if by an unspoken agreement, they turned around and surged towards the tunnel. Watching this, Xiao Honglian felt puzzled. What in the world is happening? At this moment in the subway tunnel, the zombie king was facing a life and death crisis. It was attempting to escape atop a bronze armored zombie, but the team quickly caught up, spotting the white-haired monkey protected by the bronze armored zombies. Bian Junwu shouted loudly, capture it alive. Upon hearing this, Qi Guangming immediately raised his specialized shotgun and aimed at the legs of the bronze armored zombie carrying the monkey, firing a shot. The bronze armored zombie fell with a crash, and the white-haired monkey tumbled over, landing on its back. Seeing this, Bailey Chang Ching, holding a long spear, rushed forward and pointed the sharp tip directly at the monkey's neck. The other bronze armored zombies, seeing this, dared not continue their assault and could only growl lowly, pleading for mercy. The team approached the white-haired monkey, incredulous, is this thing really the zombie king that controls the zombie army? Wu Di laughed disinterestedly. I thought the zombie king would be stronger. I even held back some of my strength, but it turns out to be a weakling. At that moment, Bailey Chang Ching analyzed, when you think about it, this actually makes sense. If it truly can control countless zombies, that means it's the brain of the horde, or some kind of control type mutant. In that case, it doesn't necessarily need strong personal combat abilities. Behind them, Meng Siyu also murmured, no wonder this guy was hiding so deep. It turns out it needed the protection of the bronze armored zombies and the zombie horde for its safety. So even though it could control countless zombies, it dared not wage a full-scale war against human forces. After all, its true form seems too weak. I reckon an ordinary person without any special abilities could subdue this guy. After gaining control of the zombie king, Bian Junwu was still not satisfied. He pressed his gun against the monkey's head and said coldly, order your minions to kill each other. Just then, the white-haired monkey, though visibly terrified, managed to let out a desperate scream. The next second, the six bronze armored zombies instantly received the command, their faces filled with murderous intent as they encircled the team. Bailey Changqing's long spear, already eager for action, burst forth with golden light as he laughed loudly. With a sweeping strike of his spear, he severed all the approaching bronze armored zombies at the waist. This was Vice Captain Bailey Changqing's ability, Iron Wrist. After dealing with the bronze armored zombies, the team noticed a zombie horde stirring not far behind them. Bian Junwu immediately grew angry. It seems this beast isn't being honest. He then executed the white-haired monkey with a single shot to the head. Bian Junwu knew well that since the creature was unwilling to cooperate, it had to be dealt with decisively, or else it would summon more zombie hordes. At that moment, Meng Siyu took a body bag from her backpack, placed the white-haired monkey inside, and then carried it on her back. Soon after, the group quickly left the underground tunnel and emerged at the nearest subway entrance. As soon as they reached the surface, their jaws dropped. The snowy plains were densely packed with zombies, but at that moment, they were just standing idly in the snowstorm, looking around aimlessly as if they had lost their target. Bian Junwa said, the zombie king has been dealt with by us, and these controlled zombies have lost their brain, losing the consciousness of group activity. They should hardly pose 
a threat to humans. After all, zombies with intelligence and zombies without intelligence are completely different creatures. However, sensing the presence of humans, their eyes suddenly lit up with red. The group did not want to entangle with these headless flies and quickly left the area. They returned to where their vehicle was parked. Meng Siyu placed the white-haired monkey on the vehicle, then put on a white protective suit, set up a temporary operating table inside the vehicle, and began the dissection. They were eager to gather some information from the zombie king to see if they could find a way to eliminate the zombie virus. Meng Siyu did not stop for a moment, working through the night in the vehicle. By early the next morning, as the sky was just beginning to lighten, Meng Siyu finally stepped out of the motorhome and said to Bian Jungwoo with a serious look, the analysis results are out. This monkey isn't actually a primate, it used to be human, or at least it was before it was transformed into this. Its body harbors a large amount of the zombie virus, which the zombie king can transmit to other corpses, turning them into zombies. It seems to also use this virus as a medium to establish a sort of connection with the zombies, thereby controlling the horde. The zombie king itself possesses intelligence, its brain remains intact, allowing it to continually refine its strategies based on feedback from the zombie horde. Bailey Changqing couldn't help but say, sounds pretty much like humans. Qi Guangming added gravely, this confirms our earlier guess. If we just eliminate all the zombie kings in Heavenly Sea City, this zombie crisis should be resolved. When you think about it, it's just a few monkeys. Meng Siyu informed everyone, we've now confirmed this creature is indeed the zombie king. Even if there are countless numbers of zombies, without the zombie king's command, they won't pose much of a threat. After all, in a world with mutants, losing the collective consciousness, any force can easily clear these dead things. But at that time, Bian Jung amused, I don't think it's that simple. Since there's more than one zombie king in Heavenly Sea City, where did the first zombie king come from? What is the source of the zombie virus? How do we explain that? Meng Siyu shook her head. That's indeed a big question. The scale of the zombie horde is too vast. We have no way to trace it. But it's very likely that this white-haired monkey is just one type of zombie, created by the real zombie king as a source of infection, and its purpose is to create and command the horde. The white-haired monkey also has to obey its creator. Bailey Changqing laughed. But we haven't come away empty-handed. At least we know some good news. Next, we just need to focus on the zombie kings. As long as we resolve the zombie kings, the horde will no longer be a problem. I don't think it's difficult. Just like today, we just need to find the zombie king. Taking it down as a piece of cake, it's just a bit troublesome to find them. Hearing this, Wu Di covered his face, speechless, with so many subway lines. How long would it take to search them all? If only we could gather them all together and let my floating cannon go by Ubi Ubi and wipe them all out, Wu Di said. Everyone couldn't help but laugh. You're thinking too simply. If it were that easy, there would be no need for headquarters to send us. Just then, Bian Junwu, who had been pondering, suddenly spoke up. Gathering them all together and annihilating them in one fell swoop is indeed an idea worth considering. Everyone looked astonished. Only Woody's eyes lit up, and he laughed happily. Great minds think alike. My suggestion is great. At that moment, Bailey Changqing became serious, contemplating the feasibility, and he murmured softly, it's easier said than done. But with the zombie hordes spread all over Heavenly Sea City, gathering them together is easier said than done. Kongsheng also said, even if we really could gather them all, dealing with such a large number would be challenging. Bian Junwa coolly analyzed, from the current situation, the movements of the zombie hordes actually have a certain purpose. Although they are attracted to living humans, their targets have always been the five major forces. If that's the case, we could gather all the people from the five major forces together, attract all the zombie hordes, and then annihilate the zombie king in one fell swoop. If this method really works, it would confirm a theory of mine. Hearing theory, everyone was very curious. Bian Junwo smiled slightly, looking at the endless zombies on the snowy plains and said, so far, the trend of the zombie hordes spreading to other cities isn't very apparent. Most zombies are still concentrated in Heavenly Sea City. Have you ever thought this phenomenon actually defies common sense? If the zombies are caused by some virus, then according to the nature of viruses, their primary objective should be continuous spread. After all, there are only so many living humans in Heavenly Sea City. Their steadfast defense of Heavenly Sea City and continuous attacks on the five major forces doesn't make sense. They even attack Zhang Yi Shelter, which only has a few people, and the scale of the zombie mobilization is not small. So, I analyze, it's hard to say that there are no man-made factors behind this. At this point, a playful expression appeared on Bian Junwu's face. The zombie king was likely deliberately created by someone. If my guess is correct, then we must eradicate this underground force entirely and deal with them all at once. Meanwhile, the zombies, having lost their unified command, wandered hazily towards Radiant Prosperity Base, drawn by the scent of living humans. Initially, the soldiers were shocked, but they soon realized that these zombies had significantly decreased in combat effectiveness and no longer exhibited the aggression and organization of before. Seeing this, Xiao Honglian breathed a sigh of relief, not knowing exactly what had happened, but sure that it was good news. Beside her, Zhuge Qingting analyzed, I think this might be related to the River South Domain Investigation Team. Considering the formidable skills of those
those investigators. Xiao Holian's expression grew serious. That possibility can't be ruled out. She thought to herself, just a seven-person team had resolved a major problem in one district on their first day in Heavenly Sea City, deepening her respect for the investigation team. While Radiant Prosperity Base was under siege by zombies, Snow Worship Sect was not spared either. After a night of fierce fighting, Snow Worship Sect once again witnessed a field of corpses. Fortunately, they had accumulated some experience in resisting zombies over time, so the number of deaths was gradually decreasing. As the newly appointed priest of Snow Worship Sect, Li Jian's family was well protected last night. However, his son Li Kale, worried about his young girlfriend Su Bebe, danger to go find her. At this moment, Li Jian and his wife were moving through the camp, calling their son's name. When they reached the corner of a bungalow, the scene before them left them utterly shocked, their faces turning ashen. They saw their son Li Kale lying on the ground covered in blood, his lower body already soaked in dark red blood. Yuan Konya was squatting in front of him, holding a dagger, her eyes showing a perverse joy. Li Jian's mind went blank, and instinctively he shouted Kale and rushed towards his son. Yuan Konya did not even look up, just extended her left hand towards the charging Li Jian. Suddenly, with a loud bang, Li Jian felt as if he had been hit by a truck and was knocked back four or five meters. His wife saw this scene, feeling both angry and helpless, while Yuan Konya still kept her head down, muttering to himself, too filthy, you need to be purified. Li Jian and his wife were in utter despair, unable to comprehend why the saintly leader would harm their son. Just then, High Priest Ching Yishan approached, suddenly embracing Yuan Konya from behind, and gently consoled, Lord Leader, calm down. Yuan Konya's body remained stiff, and she muttered to herself, original sin, unforgivable, I am helping him. Ching Yishan spoke in a calm tone, I know, I know, the leader is always right. With that, he helped Yuan Konya up and left the scene without looking back. Li Jian and his wife could only watch them leave helplessly. They rushed to Li Kale's side and found that he was only unconscious. There were no fatal wounds on his body, only his lower body was bloody. At that moment, Li Jian recalled the so-called purification ceremony that many young boys undergo when they join the church. He had thought that after becoming a priest, his son would be spared, but that day still came. The only consolation was that Li Kale's life seemed to have been spared. After the so-called purification, Yuan Konya had not forgotten to use his abilities to heal the wounds. Not far away, Li Kale's young girlfriend, Su Bebe, was cowering in a corner, huddled up in fear. Li Jian and his wife could not accept what had happened. They questioned Su Bebe, who was hiding in the corner. What exactly happened? Our son went out last night to protect you. Why would the leader treat him this way? Is it because of you? Su Bebe was already a mess of tears, and facing their questioning, she just shook her head repeatedly, crying and sobbing. Last night, when we were escaping from death, Kale kissed me impulsively. The leader happened to see this moment, and then it turned into this. I don't know why the leader would do this. Meanwhile, Jing Yixian took Yuan Konya back to her room. By then, Yuan Konya was gradually regaining her composure, and she looked at Jing Yixian blankly and asked, I did nothing wrong. All this was to help them. I was correcting their mistakes. Jing Yixian nodded, gazing at Yuan Konya tenderly. You did the right thing. It's all that child's fault. He then lay down on Yuan Konya's lap, saying, In this apocalypse, there is no need for such a thing as love. All impure relationships between men and women must be prohibited. Yuan Konya sighed, murmuring, It's a pity they don't understand my good intentions. She stroked Jing Yixian's cheek and said, If all men were like you, the world would not be so filthy. At this, Yuan Konya suddenly became serious again, her expression turning calm and commanding. That child is Li Jian's son. He shouldn't blame me, Jing Yixian said. Rest assured, leader, I will talk to him and make him understand your kind intentions. I think he will understand. Li Jian was full of anger, but he knew they had no way to avenge their son, not even to get justice. He had no choice but to seek an explanation from Jing Yixian. But before he could even speak, Jing Yixian told him, your son has just been purified, which is already a great grace from the leader. Blame your son for behaving improperly in front of the leader. As Snow Worship Sect grows stronger, if not managed, it can easily lead to unrest, and romantic relations often form the basis of such turmoil. Everything the leader has done is for the development of the sect. You are a smart man. I think you should understand this principle. And the leader did not target you intentionally. This applies to everyone. In the future, your son can get an extra portion of nutrition, and I hope this matter won't affect your work. Li Jian listened to this lecture in silence for a long time, but as a former finance director for one of the Fortune 500 companies, he couldn't possibly lack the ability to think independently. Although he nodded in agreement with the high priest, he clearly understood that such twisted logic was only good for deceiving others. Does purifying people maintain the stability of the sect? Claiming it is for the sect's development, when their ability to propagate is gone, what development can there be? Li Jian inwardly cursed Ching Yixian's absurdity and finally realized that the Snow Worship sect was not the utopia he had imagined, but clearly a complete cult. After successfully killing a zombie king, Bian Junwo also established his battle plan, which was to attract all the zombies of Heavenly Sea City to one place and then send elite troops from all sides to infiltrate underground and carry out precise decapitation strikes on the zombie 
kings in various locations. The plan was gradually becoming clear. The next step was to choose a suitable location to use as bait. Bien Junwa looked at the communicator in his hand, which displayed the positions of the major forces and the main activity range of the zombie hordes. Eventually, he chose the headquarters of Snow Worship Sect for two reasons. First, Snow Worship Sect originally had a large number of followers, which could attract zombies the most. Second, the location of Snow Worship Sect is in a relatively central part of Heavenly Sea City, which was once the most bustling area of Heavenly Sea City with the highest population density, hence the highest number of deaths. Zombies were naturally most dense there. Immediately afterward, Bien Junwa sent messages to the major forces, instructing them to secure non-combat personnel immediately, then bring all combat forces to assemble at Snow Worship Sect. After receiving the orders, the reactions of the five forces varied. Xiao Honglian, now the biggest beneficiary, had already deeply acknowledged the capabilities of the investigation team after they had cleared a large number of zombies around them, especially after the zombie king was killed. She did not hesitate and replied immediately, we will arrange it right away. Emerald Waterside and Morning Dew also had no objections. After securing their non-combat personnel, they led most of their combat forces to the Snow Worship Sect headquarters as instructed by Bian Junwu. Only Zheng Yixian, upon receiving the message, appeared extremely anxious. He hurried to find Yuan Kongye and reported, the investigation team is asking everyone to gather here. It seems they want to have a decisive battle with the zombie horde. What should we do? This isn't good news for us. Yuan Kongya frowned and sighed. Having the main battlefield here is indeed all disadvantage and no benefit for us. Moreover, concentrating all the combat forces here poses a great threat to us. Given the uneasy relations among the five major forces, a slight mishandling could spell disaster. Jing Yixian whispered mysteriously to Yuan Kongya, should we move quickly, just in case the investigation team finds out, it would be bad. Yuan Kongya remained silent for a long time before reluctantly nodding. It seems we have no choice but to do that now. Then she clasped her hands together, looked up devoutly at the sky, and murmured, but we shouldn't worry too much. I believe the snow god will protect his followers, Yuan Kongya said. They were well aware that the investigation team would not seek their opinion. They had no choice but to comply obediently. Meanwhile, Zhang Yi also received Bian Junwu's message. Zhang Yi didn't understand why Chu Snow Worship Sect, that broken place, and why bring all the combat forces. Was a major battle being prepared? So confident about starting a battle, had some important intelligence been uncovered? Zhang Yi paced back and forth in the living room, pondering the deeper meaning. At that moment, Yang Xinxin entered the living room, and seeing Zhang Yi deep in thought, she couldn't help asking, are you troubled by something again? Seeing it was Yang Xinxin, Zhang Yi immediately called her over and handed her the message from Bian Junwu. After briefly pondering, Yang Xinxin smiled and said, I think this is actually good news. Zhang Yi, puzzled, analyzed this for me. Yang Xinxin continued, think about it, Snow Worship Sect has no resources, their only significant advantage is their people. Adding the people from Snow Worship Sect to those gathered from other forces, that place will undoubtedly become the most obvious target for the zombies. From this perspective, the investigation team's goal becomes clear. They obviously want to gather all forces at Snow Worship Sect, concentrate all the zombies there, and then annihilate them all at once. 